Today I want to really just appeal to you on a different level. The fact that you're on this video blog today, maybe this is your first time or maybe you're like some of you wonderful friends that come back time and time and time again. I've met you in stores, I've met you in bars, I've met you online, you've come to EMS weekends. It's been pretty incredible, nothing short of life changing. But I want to honor you today, both unfaithful and betrayed. Because if you're watching this, you're trying. And sometimes we have to just honor the fact that we're trying. I can think of many of you by name, and I certainly wouldn't mention you, that are struggling, that message me in one way or another and say, Samuel, there's just, it's, it's awful. And I want to acknowledge that today. It's awful, I know. But you're here, and you're trying, and you obviously haven't given up yet. I read this funny quote the other day. It said, midlife is like looking both ways before you cross the street only to get hit by an airplane. And recovery is about the same thing. You know, you think you're doing good, and then your legs get swept out from underneath you. Or you think there's no hope, I, we're, we might as well file, or we might as well sign the papers, we're done. And then within a week or two, you're like, I never saw this coming, there's been a change, it's miraculous, oh my gosh. The fact that you're watching this, that you are spending your time with me today, I think in many ways reveals the fact that you haven't quit on at least you, and maybe you haven't quit on your spouse, and your family and the restoration of that marriage or relationship. But I want to tell you that I know that I know that I know infidelity is one of the most isolating, shaming, debilitating experiences that you can go through. And I know that. And I know that you're feeling that today. I know that on some days, man, success is, and I mean this graciously, very seriously, not taking your own life. Friends, there's been people that have watched these videos that have attempted to take their own life. There's been, unfortunately, throughout the years, there's been a couple people who've succeeded. And our heart breaks for them and breaks for you that have been left behind. The reality is what you're experiencing is two things. It's traumatized because it absolutely destroys your faith in humanity in so many things. Your faith in God, your faith in country, your faith in your fellow man or woman, relationships, best friends. I can go on down the road. It's also violating because you feel violated that your spouse would betray you. You feel violated at yourself because maybe you didn't know that you were capable of committing such an atrocity like infidelity. I know that there are days when you really want to sit down and drink yourself into a stupor, not wake up, or at least drink yourself drunk to make it through the day. I know that there are moments where you maybe feel like doing every drug you've never done before just because you're so angry at God or angry at your spouse or angry at yourself. Believe it or not, even as an unfaithful, I know what it's like to pound your, your hand on the desk of life yelling that this isn't fair, that you don't deserve what you're experiencing, that the punishment doesn't fit the crime. I certainly understand from someone like Samantha's perspective to be pounding your fist, fist on that same desk of this isn't fair because you're a betrayed spouse and you don't deserve this and you never saw this coming and you can't believe the hell that you are living in right now. There have been so many days I wanted to disappear. Early on, I wanted to take my life and honestly, the only reason that I didn't was because of, at the time, my three kids who were incredibly young. That was the only reason next to the grace of God and his keeping grace. Now certainly 
if you're dealing with suicidal thoughts, I, I beg of you to reach out for help. Call the suicide prevention hotline. Call a friend. Call a church. Call someone. Do not play with that. For more of us, I know that you feel this kind of chasm where you're not necessarily suicidal, but you're hopeless and you're despairing and you can't see any light at the end of the tunnel, let alone the tunnel. All you see is darkness and hopelessness. And I just want to tell you right now, it sounds a little bit funny, but I was watching a movie several years ago. I believe it was Robin Hood, the one with uh, Russell Crowe, and there's this moment where he learns about how his father died and, and who, his lineage and who he's from. And he has this moment where this kind of mentor father figure looks at him and says to him, not dead, not now. And it speaks to the fact that he still had life left. His future was uncertain. He may die on the battlefield and all that kind of stuff in the movies and, and valor and war. But there was this moment that struck me of, you know what, I'm not dead. Not yet. Okay? There's lots of fears I have about the future and all that kind of stuff and my health, but I still have life. And more importantly, you have life. On the other side of this camera, wherever you're at, you're driving, which so many of you do, or you're just having a dark moment, or your spouse <laughs> hammered you to watch a video, I get it. And I just want to tell you, you're not dead. You still have life. This is not the end. You have no idea what your life will look like in three to six months or three to six years. If you would have told me during some of the darkest days of my life, when I walked on the beach in Manhattan Beach, when I had just put Samantha and my three kids on a plane to another state because she couldn't stand to be around me, I got on my knees at this beach, I'll never forget it, and I just begged God to give me another chance at my family and at life, and that I would do whatever he gave me the opportunity to do. I never could conceive that I would have the privilege to get to do what I do with you and people all over the world. I just implore you, I beg you, do not give up on you. You can't control what your spouse or partner does. That's not up for you to control. You can only control what you do. And I want to tell you, yes, you, that there is hope for you. There is life for you. You can't see it because infidelity is, again, one of the most damaging, violating, disorienting things that you'll go through. You will develop maybe short-term PTSD, maybe severe PTSD. You will be changed by this, but you can't tell me. No one in this world can convince me that you can't be healed and that you can't be restored and that your life cannot have meaning and purpose and joy and fulfillment once again. You can't convince me of that. I have committed an atrocity of infidelity. I have devastated thousands upon thousands of people. There are still people all over this world. If you were to mention my name to them, they would get a nervous tick. They would probably rage with anger. I can't control that. I have tried to pursue restoration with whomever would allow me to. But I get to do something pretty amazing and life-changing. I'm just an example. You have no idea what your life will look like. Don't give up on your future based upon how painful and agonizing it is right now. No one can tell you or convince you that it's going to be like this forever. That's a lie. That's a lie. That's a lie. Don't believe the lies today. Make a decision to get up on your own two feet and take one step at a time. Don't give up on you. Don't give up on your future just because of how dark it is right now. Not dead, not yet. Mm -hmm.